Welcome to the Princeton Satellite Systems MATLAB Toolbox Tutorials. In this video, we are going to walk through the CubeSat simulation demo. To start, let's open the demo. We have a few options. I am simply going to open it by typing in Edit CubeSat Simulation and hitting Enter. This brings up the script of CubeSat Simulation for editing. This demo demonstrates a CubeSat's attitude and power system dynamics with disturbances. The simulation includes drag and radiation pressure. The only actuator available for attitude is magnetic torquers, which is modeled as a dipole. The first step is to select the CubeSat type. Here we selected a 1U CubeSat, which simply means it is a 10 centimeter cube. The CubeSat is modeled as a series of six faces, and these faces are used in the computation of the forces and torques. We use the CubeSat faces function, which gives you the areas of the faces, the outward normal vectors, and the location from the geometric center of the spacecraft. In the next section, we use the function right hand side CubeSat, which will return a default data structure stored in D. To see the entries that are set in the default, let's go back to the command window and open the right hand side CubeSat script. So, let's type edit RHS CubeSat and hit enter. This will bring up the function. We can see if we scroll down that if there are no inputs, then the default data structure is saved as default struct. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can see the inputs for default struct. The defaults are for a 1U CubeSat in orbit around the Earth. The RHS CubeSat function will also be called repeatedly during the simulation, which we will see later on. We can then go back to the CubeSat sim. Some of the defaults need to be modified. The date here, d.jdo, is set to April 5th, 2012. Specifying the appropriate starting date for the simulation is important, as solar flux predictions, which affect the forces due to drag, change as a function of time. The start date can be changed using the date to JD function, in which you input the year, month, day, hours, minutes, and seconds, and it will give you the Julian date. The mass is set to 1 kilogram, as CubeSats are 1 kilogram per unit. Finally, the inertia is set using the inertia CubeSat function. The inertia CubeSat function computes the inertia, assuming the mass is uniformly distributed throughout the volume. This is usually a good first approximation. Next, you set the initial state. The initial state specifies the position, velocity, orientation, angular velocity, and battery state of charge of the CubeSat at the start of the simulation. In this case, we initialize in a circular orbit. We start from the x-axis and give the CubeSat an orbit rate about the y-axis. Next, we specify the surface model properties for the data structure. These are used to calculate the drag force on the CubeSat. This includes the coefficient of drag, which we set to 2.7. The arrow model uses the function CubeSat arrow which is a 1U CubeSat in a 6,500 kilometer orbit. The optical model uses the function CubeSat radiation pressure, which takes into account solar pressure, Earth radiation pressure, and Earth albedo. The skew omega Earth just converts the omega Earth vector into a skew symmetric matrix. Now we have to set the power system model. We set the various values of the efficiency and battery capacity. We also specify that there are solar cells on each face. This is done in the solar cell areas section. To change this, you could change one of the six ones for the six faces to zero if there is no solar cell on that face or to some fractional number. The solar flux prediction gives you the various properties based on the Julian date. The solar flux predictions will later be used for the atmospheric density model, which is Jachia's 1970 model. You can see the ATM J70 function for more information. The next section just shows that we are orbiting Earth and not another planet. You can initialize your control dipole and store it in the data structure. 
The time parameters specifies the simulation duration and time step. The days is how long the simulation will run for, and DT is the time step in seconds. Initializing the plotting array pre-allocates memory for the plotting variables to save time during the simulation. Finally, we are ready to run the simulation. The loop runs for the length of nsim, which we specified above as 0.1 days, with the time step also specified above as 10 seconds. At each time step, the magnetic field of Earth is calculated based on the time and position of the spacecraft. Next, we apply our control. Here we are applying a constant dipole, but time varying control is also possible. Then we actually perform the integration of right hand side CubeSat using a fourth order Runacuda function. The function right hand side CubeSat is called to obtain the orbit and attitude dynamics, including the forces and torques due to drag and the magnetic control. This simulation repeats for the specified duration. Once the simulation has been run, the demo will plot the results. So let's run the demo. This gives you an animation of the orientation of the CubeSat over the length of the simulation. If we exit out of that, we can see the plots it outputs. The plots display the evolution of gravity, gradient torques, the magnetic torques, the aerodynamic torques, the drag force, the power system, the attitude rate, the geocentric inertial coordinates to body quaternion, the change in altitude, and the CubeSat orbit. Now that you understand how this demo works, feel free to change the numbers to reflect your specific needs.